As long as life and joy. Welcome to our online service today. Wherever you are, you are most welcome to join with us in celebrating with the Methodist Covenant Service. Here in the Chet Valley in South Norfolk, we are a united church with local Anglicans and Methodists worshipping together. We also have a close relationship with our Catholic congregation who use this building, St John's Methodist Church. From the earliest days of Methodist societies, John Wesley invited the Methodist people to renew their covenant relationship with God. The emphasis of the whole service is on God's readiness to enfold us in his generous love, not dependent on our deserving. Our response, also in love, springs with joy from thankful recognition of God's grace. We open our worship singing the hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. Let us pray. Glory to the Father, the God of love who created us, who continually preserves and sustains us, who has loved us with an everlasting love and given us the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Glory to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who, though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor and was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin. 
who proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and was obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, who was raised from the dead and is alive forever and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who trust in him, who is seated at God's right hand in glory and will come to be our judge. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Glory to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, by whom we are born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ, whose witness confirms us, whose wisdom teaches us, whose power enables us, who will do for us more than we can ask or think. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. To the one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory forever. Amen. And the collect for today. God of grace, through the mediation of your Son, you call us into a new covenant. Help us therefore to draw near with faith and join ourselves in a perpetual covenant with you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have three readings which link with our theme of covenant this morning. A reading from the law. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and they all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars, responding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the Book of the Covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people, and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all his words. Then Moses and Aaron Nadab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel went up and they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there was something like pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. God did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. Also they beheld God and they ate and drank. For the wisdom that guides us, we praise praise you, you, O God. God. A reading from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. For the word that inspires us, we We praise praise you, O God. God. A reading from the epistles. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. 
Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For the truth that enlightens us, we, we praise, praise you, you, O God. God. from the Gospel according to Luke. Hear the Gospel of Christ. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ our Saviour. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, 
or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that would be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the, ta- the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to Christ Christ our our Lord. Lord. This morning, we are celebrating the Christian presence in the Chet Valley by bringing together the worshipping communities of Anglicans, Methodists and Catholics. And we are joining with all those who are worshipping with us in our online congregation. We are also celebrating Candle Mass, remembering when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple to give thanks to God. And we are remembering the covenant that is between God and ourselves and committing anew to that using the Methodist covenant prayer. So what is a covenant? A covenant is an oath or promise binding two or more parties together, which may be of unequal standing. It establishes the nature and terms of the future relationship. I guess you may be familiar with the kind of covenantal agreements put into place when you buy a property. For example, not to burn pitch on your property, or perhaps not to take out the trees. The covenant between God and humankind is clearly between parties of unequal standing and comes out of God's grace and everlasting love. Our sovereign God freely binds himself to enter into a covenant which we may choose to accept or not. The notion of covenant is common in scripture. There is God's covenant with Noah, no longer to cover the earth with a flood to destroy it. The sign of that covenant was the bow set in the sky, a rainbow. God made a covenant with Abram, promising land from Egypt to the Euphrates, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky or the grains of sand, giving birth to a multitude of nations. The sign of that covenant was for every male to be circumcised. There were also covenants between humans, such as that between Jacob and his father-in-law Laban, sealed by the setting up of a pillar of stones to witness that neither would pass to harm the other. 
And in our first reading this morning, we heard of the covenant with Moses, when the people agreed to do all that was in the book of the covenant, including the Ten Commandments and numerous other laws concerning life, such as the keeping of festivals like the Passover and the Sabbath laws for the working of the land. And the people promised to be obedient to the Lord. This covenant was ratified by sacrifice and offering of bulls, their blood being dashed on the altar and the people. Our second reading from the prophet Jeremiah looked forward to a new covenant, not replacing the old, but enhancing it, writing the law within the hearts of the people so that they will know God. They will be his people and he will be their God and will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. A prophecy that for Christians looks forward to the birth of Christ. Our gospel reading sees Mary and Joseph fulfilling their covenant responsibilities. They are bringing Jesus, who has been circumcised, to the temple to be presented to the Lord as it is the time for their purification. They have brought a sacrifice, obedient to the law, and once they have finished the requirements of the law, they return home. Except it wasn't quite that straightforward. When Mary and Joseph arrived, they met Simeon, who had some extraordinary things to say to them about their baby son, Jesus. That he was to bring salvation. That he was to be a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, non-Jews, us. Jesus is for everybody, whatever race, whatever denomination of Christian, Catholics, Anglicans, Methodists. Simeon, an old man, has been waiting to see the Saviour, part of God's plan for him. And Mary, acquiescent to God's plan for her to bear his son, finds that another part of God's plan for her is that her son's life will bring her suffering. Then there's Anna, an old lady who has been faithfully praying in the temple for a great number of years. She recognises the redemption that Jesus will bring to Jerusalem and rushes about telling everybody part of God's plan for her. we are soon going to commit ourselves anew to the covenant between God and humankind. Will we each be ready to rise to the challenge of whatever it is that God has planned for us? Amen. And so we come to the covenantal part of our service. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him, all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. 
Let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim upon us. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear, hear us as we, we confess, confess our, our sins. sins. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him and afraid to bear the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord forgive. forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, evade our responsibilities, and fail to be good stewards of your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn, and selfish in sharing your love with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord forgive. forgive. Have mercy, mercy on, on me, me O God, God, in your constant love. In the fullness of your mercy, blot out my offences. Wash away all my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And so we sing again. Come, let us use the grace divine.
we come to the covenant prayer itself. When we say the prayer together, let us take our time. These are big promises. And in the context of our Christian journey, they are significant. Beloved in Christ, let us again claim for ourselves this covenant which God has made with his people and take upon us the yoke of Christ. This means that we are content that he appoint us our place and work and that he be our reward. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ, except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given us in Christ, who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Lord God, Holy Father, since you have called us through Christ to share in this gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves with joy the yoke of obedience and for love of you engage ourselves to seek and do your perfect will. We are no longer our own, but yours. I, I am no, am no longer, longer my own, own but, but yours. yours. Put me, me to what you, what you will. will. Rank, Rank me with whom you will. will. Put, Put me, me to doing. doing. Put, Put me to suffering. suffering. Let, Let me, me be employed, employed for you, you or laid aside, aside for you. you. Exalted for you, or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. As we've entered this covenant, not for ourselves alone, but as God's servants and witnesses, let us pray for the church and for the world. Loving God, hear us as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Make, Make us, us all one, one that, that the, the world, world may believe. believe. Inspire and lead all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Establish, Establish justice, justice and peace among, among all people. people. Have compassion on all who suffer from any sickness, grief or trouble. Deliver, Deliver them from their distress. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring, Bring us, us all to share, to share in your, in your heavenly, heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray in silence for our own needs and for those of others. Lord our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers. 
And you have promised through Christ our Lord that when two or three agree in his name, you will grant what they ask. Answer now your servants' prayers according to their needs. In this world, grant that we may truly know you. And in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord has made an everlasting covenant of peace with his people. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. If you are with somebody, perhaps you would like to share the peace with them. Or if you are on your own, perhaps think of someone with whom you would like to share the peace and bless them in your heart. We sing our next hymn, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
The new covenant is written in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Its sign is Christ, the once and for all sacrifice. As St Paul says, in response, we are to make ourselves a living sacrifice. We renew the covenant every time we take communion. As it is said in the old words of administration, feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And so we celebrate. The Lord be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts, we, we lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give th thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give thanks, thanks and, and praise. God our Father, fountain of goodness, creator of all that is, you have made us in your own image. You have given us life and reason and love for one another, setting in our hearts a hunger for you. In darkness you are our light, in adversity and temptation our strength. You bear patiently with our folly and sin, granting us your law to guide us and your prophets to renew our faith. In the fullness of time you came to us in love and mercy. In Jesus Christ, your living word, full of grace and truth, he lived among us, declaring your forgiveness and revealing your wisdom in works of mercy and in his word of power. For us, he suffered and died upon the cross, by death destroying death. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your people, gathered together in every time and place to glorify your holy name. With them and all the company of heaven, we join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of power, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, pour out your spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so, Lord, we obey his command with this bread and this cup, by which we recall his death and resurrection, the source of our life and salvation. Grant that we who share in this holy sacrament may be united by your Spirit and grow into perfect love. Bring us with those who have done your will in every age into the light of your presence and the joy of your kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. Lord. Glory, Glory to, to God, God the, the Father. Father. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me shall never thirst. Draw near with faith. I am no longer mine but yours. Rank me with whom you choose. Let me be raised up, brought down low. I promise now. Let us pray. Faithful God, with these holy gifts you have fed and strengthened us in Jesus Christ your Son. Guide us on our way, that with all your faithful people we may come to share the feast of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee.
blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.